Hello YouTube, I am Jack Clark, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Musketeer. In my previous video, I promised I was going to do a deck profile on my what deck that I'll be taking with me to YCS Brighton on the 17th and 18th of December. So, this is it. If you want to view my previous video, however, there will be an annotation at the top left of the screen to be taken directly to it. So, let's go with the deck list. Deck list includes two copies of Effect Veda, one copy of Honest, three copies of Shining Angel, two copies of Thunder King Ryo, three copies of Watt Cobra, three copies of Watt Dragonfly, two copies of Watt Giraffe, and a copy of Watt Pheasant. Spell cards are as follows as well. We've got a copy of Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, two copies of MST, and three copies of Potter Duality. Trap cards are two copies of Call of the Haunted, Ceasefire, two copies of Magic Cylinder, one Mirror Force, three Frightening Roar, one Torrental, two Wadaku, one Solemn Judgment, and two Solemn Warning. I'm not going to go through the extra side decks because most of the time I've never actually needed to go into my extra deck, although with Vela and the Assurgence of Xyz Monsters, it is an option, and I do implore that you should have an extra deck simply because you can always Monster Reborn into an opponent's Tuna Monster. But yeah, let's go into the main choices for the deck. Effect Vela is amazing. You should always use Effect Veiler in this format. If you're not running at least two Effect Veilers in your main deck, I say that you should be using it in your side deck at least. And if you aren't, then try to find something that can replace it. Use Fiendish Chain or anything, it's freaking ridiculous. Next off, we've got Honest. Honest being a shoe in for any light deck, really, and it, especially in this kind of deck where the monsters are very low attack points, it acts as a form of protection. But this deck focuses on doing damage as fast as possible, unlike the more slower Hopper Lock decks. So, it, uh, so it's good for doing damage as well. Next off, we've got three copies of Shining Angel. Shining Angel being able to search for any deck, any card in the deck, barring Ryo, and it is amazing. Most of the time, I will be searching for either itself, Dragonfly, if my opponent is swarming, or if they're not going to attack it, I'll summon Honest and be able to banish it and <laughs> banish it, return it to my hand to do my next end phase. But most of the time, my main target is Wat Cobra. Wat Cobra being the main linchpin of the deck. Next off, I use two copies of Thunder King Ryo. Thunder King Ryo is a fantastic card this format, and you won't see it in the typical Watt deck because they don't have the room for it, and it's not a Watt monster. But of course, Ryo is fantastic, I don't need to explain why. But as a Thunder monster, you can also make use of it in a Thunder deck that this is, so you can always use the Watt tuners in your own Watt deck, and you can use Ryo to make their synchros. So, yes, next off, like I said, we've got three copies of. What Cobra, what Cobra being, like I said, the linchpin of the deck, is also the engine. He, when he attacks directly and he can attack directly, he adds a what monster directly from your deck to your hand, which is fantastic. If I'm in an offensive kind of position, I can search for another Cobra, I can search for Giraffe, or if I'm in a disruptive move, I can go for the Pheasant and disrupt my opponent's tokens and egg seize monsters. Or if I'm in a defensive position and I'm not in quite in pole position yet, then I can always go for Dragonfly and be able to set it next turn as a form of defense. But Cobra is fantastic, and with this deck, you'll be trying to do as much damage as fast as possible. So he attacks directly, you do a thousand damage. And what I love about what decks is that although they've got very low attack points, when they do attack, they'll be doing more damage per attack than you would with a monster with more attack points, more typically. So yes, um, next card we have three copies of What Dragonfly. What Dragonfly is similar to Shining Angel, but only able to get for what monsters, but the one thing that he is going for him is that his effect will activate when your opponent destroys it by a card effect, in addition to when it's destroyed by battle, which is ridiculous. I've had occasions where my opponent has discard Graffer, destroy your face down monster. Haha, <laughs> it's What Dragonfly, I get the surge. You're using Hyperion's destruction effect, I still get the surge. Uh, yeah, you're gonna use Dark Hole. I get the search. Black Rose. I still get the search. It it, go, it goes on and on, and it is fantastic, and it allows me to get, go to my Cobras or any of my other direct attackers as fast as possible. Next off, we got the two copies of Watch Wrath. People, a lot of people like using three of it because it is really that good. But I like to use two simply because I like I like having six direct attackers because it's having quite like the opening door. And you've got a handful of direct attackers, but you have no way of protecting them. So I use only two. But he is that good. I mean, I'll attack directly with Giraffe. And during my next main phase, I will activate Dark Hole, destroy every card on the field. They can't use Stardust Effect, they can't use anything to stop it. And it is really good to take advantage of that if you can. Um, yeah, and the last monster we got is Watched. 
Pheasant. What Pheasant is one of the dark horses of the deck. I mean, he is really good. I'm thinking of actually adding another copy to the main deck, especially with the recent surge in Rabbit Laggy decks. What Pheasant, he does what he does best when he attacks directly and he can attack directly. He can manage a monster on the field until the end of the turn. So if your opponent has any tokens on the field, you can get rid of the tokens and they won't return. If your opponent has Xyz monsters, which is what he is very good at destroying, he will banish them until the end phase, but they won't have the end they won't have the Xyz materials at the end of the turn, so it's especially good I get rid of getting rid of Lagia and Dolker and such. So he is very good, but I have also had on other occasions where he has just been very useful anyway. I mean, I've had occasions where I've had Ryo on the field, but I've like I've had a Cobra on the field, or I've had a Pot of Duality in my hand that I haven't been able to use because of Ryo. What Pheasant? I can attack with my Ryo, and then attack with my Pheasant. When he does damage, I can banish that Ryo, then I can attack with a Cobra and get the search, and then doing for my main phase, I can use Duality and get the search. And then during the end of my turn, Ryo returns to the field, so I would have dodged the bad point of Ryo, whilst my opponent still has to deal with it during their turn, which is very good. And although situational, it has happened to me on occasion. The spell cards have already gone through, and they're pretty generic, just basic staples, so I'm not really going to go through those. So, yes, and um, traps. Traps, months. yes, traps are awesome. Watts have always been very trap heavy, and this is no excuse. However, in this format, with free MST and heavy storm running rampant, we're having to use base protection on most. They have to be mostly chainable. However, as the format has gone by, people are using less and less chainable stuff because they know that their chances of them being destroyed isn't as high as anticipated. So, I'm using two copies of Call of the Haunted. Call of the Haunted allowing me to, I don't know, special summon Honest from the graveyard. I can bounce it to my hand during my main phase. Uh, I can summon one of my recruiters, and I can get another search. Or, most of the time, I will be summoning a direct attack from my graveyard to get a quick thousand or so points of damage, which is especially invaluable in this deck, simply because I try to do the damage as fast as possible, and Call of the Haunted just does that. Next off, we've got a copy of Sea Spy. Sea Spy being... One of the odd choices in the deck, however, I have grown to love this card, and it is a sable for my what deck. So, most of the time I'll be using it when my opponent, when we've got at least four monsters on the field, and that's 2,000 damage, immediately. And, like I said, I'm just trying to do as damage as fast as possible. 2,000 damage is a lot. Um, but I have had times when I have used it practically, so I have used Ceasefire against Gravekeepers when I've known they've just set a Gravekeeper Spy. They flip the Spy face up, they don't get the effect, and then they take some damage. So there are practical uses for it as well. Um, of course we've got Mirror Force, we've got Trentor, we've got the Solemns, which are all staples, so I'm not really going to have to tell you about those. But then we've got three Threatening Rule, and we've got two Wabaku. They, were both, they all f have the same kind of purpose as just to protect you from a turn. Um, these are the main form of protection. I use five forms of. I use the five traps for protection simply because that's all I need. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you have any ideas for the deck, if you have any comments, uh, fixes. Although I don't really think it needs much fixing at this point, then you can post them in the video response or as a comment down below. And if you have any ideas for future deck profiles you'd like me to do, I'm mostly going to be doing the lesser known budget kind of stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, comments uh, or send me a private message on here as well. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can duel me on Dueling Network. My username is Viberuto, um, and you're free to use this deck as much as you like, because uh, you can have moments like this where people just rage. But, yes, I am Jack Clark, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Musketeer. More videos out to you soon, but until then, I will see you soon.